Good morning on Fellowship Day 181. This is another one of those times where the ideal situation is that I welcome you, I say a specific number of a specific day and all is well and all is on track. I actually tried to be too clever and get ahead of my own game and record this over the weekend. And then I realized that I was being an idiot and I was going against my own phone settings that I'd set for my own good where all the apps just shut off at a specific time in the evening and don't work anymore. And one of those apps at one of those times was the voice recorder on my phone. I was out walking the dog again and um, halfway through my spiel, it just completely cut off. But of course, I didn't realize until I'd spoken for another five minutes to myself out loud by myself while the neighbours watched on and me slowly descend into madness. So here we are, in inverted commas, day 181. So busting right on into it after that opener. The theme of what I want to tell you today is on podcasts, specifically being on one. Um, I've got the pleasure and privilege today to be uh, taking part in an interview for the Little Science Talks podcasts from the Little Science Company run by Heidi Gardner. Um, and uh, Heidi invited me on, uh, along with her collaborator, Anna, to talk about my new book, talk about work on the imposter phenomenon, um, and talk about how that all relates to being a first-generation scientist and uh, you know, broadly in the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But on the theme of podcasts, I thought this was a good thing to talk about now because, of course, it's something that could come up over the course of your career, your fellowship, or work that you're doing in parallel um, outside of the day-to-day, -day, and that's the last of those cases is where I find myself. This whole imposter phenomenon project was something that started as more or less a diary for me as I was trying to make my way through the academic career path and was struggling with self-doubt and thinking I was in the wrong place, that I was a complete fraud. And that, long story short, for now evolved into a large-scale research project over time and then the book eventually. And now I find myself at the point of about to launch the book and I'm um, really thankful to have some interest in that. And that's where, uh, that's where I find myself speaking later today on Heidi's podcast. I've done several before, um, several at this point actually on the very same topic. But more generally for you, what may be of interest here if you've never done it or you're interested in tipping your, dip, dipping your toes in the water of podcasting, then there, there are some things that I've learned along the way that I think really make for a, not just a high quality podcast interview but quality because it's perhaps not prepared for in the way that you might expect if you're in any way overlapping with the story of this dulcet tone scott as he speaks to you then you may be a scientist or you know, a career academic someone who's no stranger to overwork and i'm not calling that out for the sake of wearing a badge of pride or bravado. It's just the way it has happened to be, so I'm not hiding from it. Um, you're an overachiever. You like overwork. You like overpreparedness. You might, on the opposite side of that same coin, procrastinate just long enough so that you bring your best self and use your own debilitating stress to push something on. If all of or any of those things exist in you, then you will feel the same temptation as me, which is to massively over-prepare for something like a podcast interview, which is synonymous and arguably better represented by the term conversation. Um, you know, podcasting is increasing in popularity, even at the time of speaking. It's been going for over a decade now, but... You know, there are now over a million podcasts available, many of which are interview podcasts. I don't know the exact statistics 
we'll find that out for another time. But it means there's a lot of different interview styles out there. And many of the most successful podcasts are those where you can sense really that the conversation is genuine and it's never going to be genuine if you're sitting with an entire script worth of notes with prepared answers with you know no off the cuff comments no surprise in what you're hearing from the host as they ask you the next question if everything's prepared and you're more or less on autopilot then you know, it just sounds like a bad movie rehearsal. Whereas, you know, genuine conversation have those moments of silence, of stumbling, of taking directions that weren't ever scripted or planned. And it's in those imperfections that you find more connection, at least in my experience. Be interesting to hear what you think. But going into a podcast like today, as I am, or on previous occasions, I'll take a couple of bullet point notes on the main things that I'm trying to get across. And as far as I can do a lot of it from memory. The exceptions to this, of course, is if someone's asked me a very, very specific question or they have something super niche or razor sharp on which they based the invitation, invitation to come on to interview, you know, that's where we'll maybe make more of a concerted effort to prepare something very specifically for that. The same would go for example on, you know, a short bite size interview for a TV station where you re you really are looking probably to deliver a, a representative lay summary of a given phenomenon that's related to a news item. So those in those cases, then, yes, of course, there's something that absolutely has to be prepared ahead of the game. But podcasts are not all part, not always part of that same game. And so today, when I, uh, this afternoon, I was looking, really looking forward to talking to Heidi and Anna. I'm glancing sideways as I speak to you now at some bullet point notes that I've taken, having skimmed through my book draft again and looked at that sideways with some of the, the opening questions or queries that Heidi asked in email when she kindly came forward to invite me on to the Little Science Talks podcast. So there's your consideration going away from today is if you do find yourself being asked to speak on some form of outreach media, like a podcast, consider just how well you really need to prepare for it and consider what you might gain in preparedness versus losing in authenticity. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to reporting back on how the podcast goes. Have a good one. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series, daily thought series, and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to dr-mark-read.com. That's dr dash mark with a c dash r e i d dot com. Thanks again for listening.